Hello, hello. You are all welcome to church this morning. So good to see you. Good to see you all in church. You are welcome to the ICGC Impact Chapel online Sunday service where Jesus resides. Amen. This is where we fellowship with the Lord every week on Sunday. This is where we share the love of God. This is where we experience the goodness of the Lord. And then it follows us all through the week. Follows us all through the week. Um, I hope you can hear me okay. Give me a wave. Give me a wave. If you can hear me, okay. God bless you. I see you your lovely waves there. Go ahead and share the um, stream, um, share the invitation, share the invitation to this you know, service so that somebody else can be blessed by what is happening in our midst. I believe that God is doing mighty things with us and um, uh, we want others to be part of what God is doing. So share the, the stream so somebody else can be blessed. Um, I just want to read a word to encourage us uh, to put in context what we are doing this morning. And I'm going to read from John chapter 4, verse 23 to 24. John chapter 4, 23 to 24 says, But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So this morning, you want to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. You want to worship the Lord uh, from the depth of your heart. You, want to, you don't want to just do something to get by. You want to worship the Lord from the core of your being, in spirit and in truth, in authenticity. You don't want to do just anything, but you want to give God true worship this morning. And uh, down the line, we will have the opportunity to take part in the Lord's table. We are going to take part in the Holy Communion. And so prepare your hearts, uh, prepare your bread, prepare your wine, but more importantly, most importantly, you want to prepare your heart so that we can be part of the Lord's table. Um, uh, if you are ready to start praising the Lord this morning, we're going to go into a short time of praise. Um, and I just want us to plug in, join in, rise up on your feet and enjoy the presence of the Lord. Let's enter into the presence of the Lord with praise in our hearts. With praise in our hearts. Amen. So rise up this morning and be part of this praise time. Hallelujah. Amen. Turn into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. There's none like you. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no
thank God for that time of praise. I believe the name of the Lord has been praised, has been lifted high up, and he is above all circumstances in our lives. Um, We're going to um, ask Brother Isaac to lead us into a time of prayer, a short but intensive time of prayer, and I just want us all to pray. Wherever you are, please pray. Lift up your voice and cry unto the Lord and we will receive answers. Brother Isaac, um, over to you. 
Thank you very much, Pastor. Beloved, this is a wonderful day that the Lord has made. This is a, a very beautiful day, a very wonderful day. We are not meeting in person, but we are meeting virtually. At this point, we're going to pray and thank the Lord for making us part of this day. We know that this day was, was, was determined from the establishment, from the foundations of the earth. Let us pray and thank God that we are part of this day. Let's pray and thank God that we've even not decided to go anywhere, but decided to come to his house, to, to come under his feet and study and learn his words. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We lift your name high. Almighty God, we bless your name. We say of a truth, you are God. Father God, even as we come before your throne this day, we say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yesterday night, we slept as pieces of logs, not knowing what happens next to our bodies. But you've made sure that your spirit did not depart from us. You've woken us up. Your spirit is still within us, Father God. We are here. We are here to worship your holy name. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. We say that of a truth, you are God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Beloved, at this point, Bible says that if we say we do not have sin in our hearts, then we are liars. Bible says that we have a father who is faithful and just. The only thing is that we should confess our sins. When we confess our sins, he will forgive us. He will cleanse us of all unrighteousness and he will even make us anew. At this point, we're going to pray and ask for forgiveness of sins. We're going to pray and ask for a reconciliation. We're going to pray and ask that anything that we've done, said, or thought about, that is against the, that is against the word of God. We're going to pray and ask that the blood, that precious blood that was shed on Calvary Cross, washes us and makes us anew, reconciles us back unto the Father. Shall we pray for forgiveness of sins, beloved? Father God, even as we come before your throne this day, once again, we ask, oh God, your word tells me that if I confess my sins, Father God, you forgive me. You are faithful. You are just, Father God. I pray even for forgiveness of sins. I pray for cleansing. I pray for washing. Holy Spirit, sins I have committed, sins I have omitted, Father God. The ones I did intentionally, the ones I did unintentionally, Father God. Sins of thought, sins of action, sins of speech, oh God. I pray, God, wash me, cleanse me. I come in all humility. I come in all humbleness. Wash me, cleanse me, oh God, make me anew. Let my prayers even be acceptable unto thee. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. At this point, beloved, we're going to pray and commit the day's service into the hands of the living God. We're going to pray that even as we've decided to leave everything and come even into the house of God, we're going to pray that these few hours we're going to spend here will not be hours that will be worthless. But then there will be hours that will live and be part of our lives. There will be hours we'll look back to and say that, yes, on Sunday, the 7th of June, I had this encounter with Jesus. And that encounter is what has taken me this far. Shall we pray that we, shall we pray, shall we pray for the, today's service? And let's also pray that we have an encounter with Christ this morning. Father God, even as he come before your throne this day, I pray and commit today's service in your hands, O oh God. I pray that my service here, I pray that my presence here, Father God, will not be in vain. I pray, oh God, and even pray for my church family, Father God. Each and every member who is supposed to be here and not here, Holy Spirit, I pray you quicken the person's steps, quicken the person's mind, Father God, to join us to fellowship, to join us to commune to the glory of your holy name. I pray, oh God, that I, <coughs> that I have an encounter with you. I pray, oh God, that... At the end of the day, I'll look back to this day and I say that, yes, I had an encounter. I'll look back and say that, yes, this day, this Sunday morning is what has taken me where I am, oh God. I thank you, Lord. I bless your holy name. I magnify your holy name. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for a wonderful service. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. We adore your holy name, oh God. We adore your holy name, oh God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. At this point, I'll hand over to Pastor Joy. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Brother Isaac. And thank you, everyone. The presence of the Lord is with us. And wherever the presence of the Lord is, the power of the Lord is present. 
And so this morning, we are going to continue our praise and worship. Amen. Uh, Brother Jeremiah is going to come up and lead us in a time of um, live praise and worship. Um, and then we will continue from there. But please, rise up to your feet. Clap your hands. Uh, let your heart, your soul, your spirit be involved in this activity because um, doors can open, uh, miracles can happen. At least the name of the Lord will be praised when you do it and do it well. Brother Jeremiah, um, over to you. Amen. Amen. We're thankful for uh, the goodness of the Lord in our lives. <laughs> My Savior, Redeemer, lifted me from the mire of clay. Oh, my, forever. I'll never be the same because you can me from the everlasting to the world beneath. I was on this side. You died, you rose again on earth. You walked away for the world to live again. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. My Savior, Redeemer, lifted me from the mind of clay. For oh, my forever, I'll never be the same as you can be from the everlasting to the world we leave by the sunny sun. Cause you live and you die, you rose again on high. The way from the world to live again. Hallelujah. For all you do. Oh, hallelujah. For all you do. My Savior. My Savior. Redeemer. Lifted me from the fire. Yeah. 
Father, you are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy. In the name above all names, glorify your name, O oh God. Be lifted up high in our houses. Be lifted up high in our lives, Father. We give you all the glory. You are worthy of all worship. You are worthy of all the glory, O oh God. You are worthy, 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 you are worthy. Nobody can compare to you, Father. Nobody can compare to you, Lord. Oh, Father, we worship you with that in the name of oh God. Jesus, beloved, don't stop to push it below. What I sense right now is the presence of the Lord is being magnified, magnified, magnified until there is room for nothing else. In your life, in your circumstances, the presence of the Lord is being magnified. It's been intensified. And when God is all in all in your life, nothing else has room to express itself. Even you will not have room. Only God will have, will have full control in your life. Uh, we thank God. We thank God. We give God praise. Amen. We give God praise. Thank you, Brother Jeremiah. Let's listen to a few updates before we go into the word this morning. Um, a few updates right here from Sister Natalie. Um. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of Pastor Joy and the leadership team, I would like to welcome you to the virtual service of the Impact Chapel at the International Central Gospel Church. We are a Bible-believing and charismatic Christian church with the mission of raising leaders, shaping visions, and influencing our society through Christ. Our local mandate here in Tucson is to help you to believe in Jesus Christ, belong to God's family, become all that God wants you to be, build for God, and be sent to the ends of the earth to the glory of God. Amen? If we do anything here that you do not understand, after the virtual service, please feel free to send us a direct message or leave a comment in the comment section, and Pastor Joy would be happy to explain things to you by the word of God. Our Sunday worship services are from 9.30 a.m. to 11 o'clock a.m. Please reserve this time for church and endeavor to share this link with somebody to invite them to our virtual service every Sunday. On Wednesdays, we have a midweek Zoom line teaching meeting. And the directions to reach the Zoom service can be located on our WhatsApp platform. On Friday mornings, we have an early morning prayer line meeting. And the number to dial in is 480-297-0773. The access code is 425-0052. And the early line prayer meeting is from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. If today is the first time you are fellowshipping with us, please leave a comment in the comment section or send us a direct message so that we may reach out to you after the service. Please do consider becoming a member of our church family. Here you will learn to believe in Christ, belong to a caring family, become all that God wants you to be, built for God, and be sent to the ends of the earth for God's glory. You will also learn to discover, develop, and deploy God's purpose for your life. Amen. We do encourage you to spend some time with God on a daily basis, and in order to facilitate this, we receive devotionals through WhatsApp every day. If you're not receiving these devotional materials or you would like to sign up to receive these devotional materials, please do once again leave a comment for us in the comment section or send us a direct message and we will make sure that you receive those devotionals. At this time, I would like for us all to prepare ourselves to receive the Word of God as we silence our cell phones and our microphones and welcome Pastor Joy back to give us the word this morning. Have a blessed Sunday. Amen. Amen and amen. 
Thank you, Sister Natalie. And as she went through those, um, our local mandates in Tucson, I don't know what uh, goes through your mind, but it is meant to be um, a graduation process where we graduate from believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. And on, in addition to believing, we learn to belong to God's family. Believe me, it's something we need to learn to do. And then after learning to belong to God's family, we learn to become all that God wants us to be. Isn't that awesome? Become all that God wants you to be. And then in addition to that, you learn to build for God. Learn to build, to partner with God in the building of the kingdom of God. And the last stage in the process is that after you are effective in building, you are going to be sent to the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. Um, I pray that God will bring you and I to that level where we would be fully effective in what God wants us to do um, on earth. Then we can have a good report in heaven. Hallelujah. All right. Right now, we're going to go um, into a time of the word. But before we even do that, I want to remind us that um, our 40 days of power is coming up very soon. Amen. I don't know if you are screaming where you are at right now, but that would be appropriate. It's okay to scream. Uh, our 40 days of power, which is 40 days of fasting and prayer, you know, fasting and prayer is coming up from June 25 to August 3. Amen. June 25, did I get the date right? I believe, yeah, June 25 to August 3. I want you to prepare for it. Uh, during those days, we are going to come onto the prayer line. We are going to be praying in the mornings. We are going to be praying in the evenings. We are going to be praying any, everywhere in between. We're going to dedicate time to pray and wait upon the Lord and see some miracles released in your life and in my life. So prepare yourself uh, to start 40 Days of Power from June 25. Um, and we are going to be posting updates and guidelines to as to what to do. All right. Thank you so much. Why not let's prepare our hearts to go into the Word of God. Let's prepare our hearts right now. You just want to say, Lord, prepare my heart. Prepare my heart. Prepare my heart. After this, we are going to partake of the Holy Communion. You want to be prepared, fully prepared. You want to do it prayerfully, and you want to benefit, leverage all the benefit that is in it. So pray right now. I just want to give you a minute to pray. I want to give you a minute to pray. I know I can't hear you, but God can hear you. I don't hear you, but God hears you. Just spend a minute to pray right now. In Jesus' name, speak to us, O oh Lord, like never before we ask, O oh God, that your word will reach us in authenticity. Your word will reach us in totality. Your word will reach us, O oh God, in, in authority. Your word will knock some things out of our lives. Your word will knock some things into our lives. Your word will rearrange our lives. Your word will transform us. Your word will refine us. Your word will prepare us. Your word will heal us. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Bring your word to us, Lord, in clarity, in wisdom, in power, Lord, that we will be changed forever. Thank you, Lord. I submit my members to you. And I ask, oh God, that you will use me, oh God, as a channel an effective channel to execute divine agenda today, O oh God, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. All right. So um, get your, your bread and your wine ready as we go into the Word, after the Word will participate in the Lord's communion. And um, please do your declaration with me with your right hand up or your Bible lifted up. You have the declaration of faith. Say, I believe in the word of God. 
It is perfect and powerful and it does not fail. The word of God is the final authority in my life. As I hear God's word today, I declare that I will be transformed into that person that God wants me to be. I love God's word and I obey God's word. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. I want to read a scripture from 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15 to 17. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15 through to 17. And um, I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation this morning, the New Living Translation of the Word. And um, it says, he said, that is the prophet of the Lord, just so you know. He said, listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem, Listen, King Jehoshaphat, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged by this mighty army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, march out against them you will find them coming up through the ascent of Ziz at the end of the valley that opens into the wilderness of Jeruel. But you will not even need to fight, beloved. You will not even need to fight. Take your positions, then stand still and watch the Lord's victory. He is with you. Oh, people of Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid or discouraged. Go out against them tomorrow, for the Lord is with you. Amen. We thank God for the reading of his word. I'm going to go back to the word in a minute, but this is the fourth week into our sermon series called Answers in Challenging Times answers in challenging times. Today, I would like us to focus on a subtitle, you know, the topic of today's uh, sermon would be the favor of God in times of adversity. Favor in adversity. The favor of God in times of adversity. As most of you know by now, I have been reviewing some books. I've been reviewing books in my library, you know, during this series, the series Answers in Challenging Times. If you don't know by now, there are answers in books. Amen. There are answers in books. And I dare to say that books, reading books is a, a separator, is a differentiator among people. Reading books differentiates among people. I believe that you heard that clear. Amen. And so I'll be reviewing some books during this series, books that have been written by various servants of the Lord, you know, that I believe are relevant in these challenging times. And today I'm going to review a book by my very good friend, my very good friend, Bishop, Bishop George Creppy. Amen. I'm going to be reading, reviewing his book called How to Live a Life of Favor. Bishop George wrote a book on how to live a life of favor. And um, again, the title of the message is Favor, God's Favor in Times of Adversity. Okay. The scripture that I read from 2 Chronicles, amen, is talking about, um, you know, it's talking about a time in the life of the nation of Israel that there was a battle. Two, two nations, I think three nations, three nations came up against them. Three armies came up against one army. And it looked like they, were they, they, they didn't have a chance. 
Okay, so as they were pondering their chances, they were pondering the, the ordeal that was ahead of them. You know, the prophet of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord came upon one of the prophets to prophesy. And that whole scenario, I read that to, to illustrate or to show us an example of God's favor in action. That was an example of God's favor in action. Because given the natural course of events, Israel was supposed to go to war against three armies. But then because of God's favor, the prophets prophesied and said, you just go and take your positions. You will not even need to fight at all. Because God says, the battle that you're going to fight does not belong to you. That battle belongs to me, the Lord. It is the Lord's battle. And I don't know if, you know, as I, as I go through this message, I want you to know that your word is embedded in this message. Amen. Your personal word, the word for your personal journey, the word for your family, the word for your business, the word for whatever you're doing, your education is embedded inside this message. So keep a keen eye out and open your heart to pick up your word in the middle of what God is about to show us. That was an example of God's favor in action. Amen. You will not even need to fight. Take your positions and then God will take over from there. Favor is an act of kindness beyond what you deserve and beyond what is usual. And I'll say that again. Favor is an act of kindness that goes beyond what you deserve. And it also goes beyond what is usual, the normal kindness. Because there's something called extraordinary kindness. There's something called extreme kindness that is out of this world, that is favor. Amen. Beloved, if God should give us what we deserve, if God decides that I will always do to us, to you, what you deserve, I don't think we will survive the journey of life. Because what we deserve is not very pleasant. It's not very good. We don't deserve any good thing. So God cuts a slack for us. He said, you don't really deserve this, but I'm going to bless you with it anyway, and that is favor. If you want to work for everything in your life, your strength will run out. We cannot work for everything that we enjoy in our lives. At a point, we need favor to kick in for us. At a certain point, we need favor to kick in for us. In the case of the nation of Israel, they deserve to fight a battle. They deserve to shed blood. They deserve to lose some men. Some of their men will die. They might even lose the battle. But God said, listen, no need to fight. I will fight for you. I'm not going to give you what you deserve. I'm going to give you what I want to give you. One of my former pastors told a story. He said that when um, he took his final exam, in pharmacology, and I don't know if you have ever taken an exam in pharmacology. It's probably one of the hardest exams, one of the hardest classes to take in college. When he took his final exam, um, it was so difficult, he knew there was no doubt that he failed. He failed that exam. You know when you write an exam and you fail, you know you fail, right? <laughs> Because in the middle somewhere, you realize that you don't even know what you're doing. You are just, you, you're just whiling away the time. And you, in the middle of the exam, you are beginning to prepare for the second, the, 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 another opportunity to reset the class. Okay, so he said he knew so well that he failed the class. So he started to avoid the professor. And... Um, Whenever he saw the professor come in, he would dodge and pass another route. And then one day he wasn't, he probably was lucky or wasn't lucky. I don't know how you think about it. He was 
passing through the faculty and then he came face to face with the professor. So he could not escape, he could not dodge. And listen to what the professor said. It's as if the professor knew what was going through his mind. He mentioned his name, I'm not gonna mention his name, amen. He mentioned his name and he said, my friend, I passed you, hallelujah. He said, listen, I know you failed. I saw your score that you failed, but I decided to pass you, hallelujah. That is an example of favor. That is a, an example of favor. May you receive favor. May somebody pass you, although you don't deserve to pass, hallelujah. May you go for an interview and flop, and they give you the job anyway. We just gave it to you because we'll, there's something about you that we like. We just gave it to you. Hallelujah. May that be your story. Beloved, I said we cannot work for everything we enjoy on earth. Life will be too difficult if we should work for everything we enjoy. In times of adversity, when life is challenging and things are difficult in times of uncertainty, you know, you are not sure whether it is safe to go, go out. It's, you are not sure if it is safe to go to the, to the mall, to the grocery. You know, you are not sure if it is even safe to go to church. In times of uncertainty, one of the things that we need is the favor of God. You don't even know whether your job will be there next week, but the favor of God will make up for all that uncertainty. Amen. According to Bishop Creppy, according to the B Bishop Creppy who wrote the book um, on favor, he said, favor makes you live the extraordinary life. Favor makes you live the extraordinary life. Favor is what makes an ordinary person rise up to fame and prominence overnight. You know that doesn't happen often, right? It takes favor to rise up overnight. Favor makes life easy to live. Oh, come on, somebody. May your life be easy to live. Hallelujah. May life be easy for you. I know it's been tough. I know it's been challenging. I know you've seen some valleys. You have seen some rugged territories, rugged terrains. But your story is about to change. And if you can plug into the favor of God that is available today, your story will change for good. He said that favor is an attitude of approval or liking beyond the usual towards a person. An attitude of approval or liking beyond the usual. I just like you. I just I just want to do good to you. I don't even know why. It's because of favor that you see an ugly man, excuse me to say, somebody who is not that attractive, marry a beautiful woman, and you are like, what, what, how come this beautiful woman married this gentleman? It is favor upon his life, amen. I see you laughing, I see you smiling. That's what I wanted, amen? May that be your story. I, you know, Bishop, Bishop Creppy says that favor is what makes God bypass a million people to get to you in an obscure location. And I don't know if you know anybody like that. God bypassed a million people and went to a village to find Mary, the mother of Jesus and said, hi, you are a, the highly favored one, amen. You have found favor with God, and so you are going to be made the father of the savior, hallelujah. That is favor, that is favor. And I wanna say a few more things about favor. And what I'm trying to do is that I am, I am trying to um, whet your appetite for favor, amen, maybe, you have only lived life in the natural. You have only lived life in the tangible, that you have to work for everything you earn. The word of God is saying today 
that there is another level of living that is beyond the tangible, that is beyond the physical, that is beyond the natural. That is the supernatural, extraordinary life. And that you don't, when you get there, you don't have to work for everything that you enjoy. You don't have to work for everything that you enjoy. He says, favor is great. And I know that favor is great when things are normal. But favor is even more enjoyable when things are impossible. When there are disease outbreaks and injustices, injustices in our system, the wickedness in the heart of men that appear to be ruling in our society, and you still plow through and break through, that is favor. That is God's favor. Favor is when God gives preferential treatment to a person beyond human understanding. And the story of Esther shows how God's favor can set you apart. I want to read something about Esther. God set her apart for preferential treatment. Somebody say preferential treatment. Okay. The story of Esther, I want to read from Esther chapter 2. And I'm just going to read 16 to 17, Esther chapter 2. It says that, so Esther was taken to King Ahasuerus, okay, into his royal palace in the 10th month, which is the month of Tabith, in the seventh year of his reign. And it says, the king loved Esther more than all the other women. Can somebody see favor? The king loved Esther more than all the other women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins. They were all virgins. Okay. So he set the royal crown upon her, upon her head, and made her queen instead of Vashti. Hallelujah. So to be favored means to become God's object of delight. God delights in you, that he gives you preferential treatment to the extent that sometimes, sometimes God will overlook your faults. He'll overlook your weaknesses and he'll bless you anyways. Somebody say, bless me, Lord, anyways. I, I know I don't deserve it, but just bless me anyways, Lord. Amen. Favor will deliver you from calamity. Favor will set you apart as God's untouchable. Favor will let what others pursue, pursue you. I want to say it again. The thing that people have said, spent 10 years to toil for, favor will make that thing come to, your, to you and will rest on your lap without much effort. That's what favor does. And I want, I want us to go, you know, as I went through that book, one of the questions that was on my mind, I want to bring it up. I know that question will probably be on your mind right now. Um, favor, 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 favor. I can't stop talking about it, amen? But there was a question that as I read through the book, say favor is this, Favor is that, favor does this, favor does that. One of the things that he said favor does, before, before I go to that question, right? One of the things that he said favor does is that when, until you are favored by God, your assignment in life becomes a burden instead of a project of joy. I like that statement so much. He said that if you don't have favor in your life, your assignment in life, your calling, your purpose, it will be a burden. It will feel so heavy. It will weigh you down. But then originally, it was meant to be a project of joy. May your calling be a project of joy for you. I pray that as you go through life, life would be fun. Life will be smooth sailing. Life will be, you, where people are crying, you will be smiling. And that is what favor does. But the question that was going on in my mind was, 
how can I enjoy God's favor? How, what can I do to enjoy God's favor in my life? And um, I know that question is going on in your mind. So somewhere along the line, I don't remember what chapter, but he devoted one of the chapters to what you can do. He, the, the title of the chapter was, what makes you enjoy favor in your life? What makes you enjoy favor? And the question I want to answer is just that. How can I enjoy more of God's favor in my life? And he, he went into differentiating between two types of favor. He said there is unconditional favor and there is conditional. Unconditional favor says, you know, God grants to you something solely based on his own counsel. He grants to you things based on his own accord, his own counsel. It has nothing to do with what you do or don't do. That is unconditional favor. And that's what most of us are familiar with. Examples, um, when you look at Romans chapter 9, Romans chapter 9, um, the, the, the story, some two stories were retold over there. Jacob, God said, Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have hated. He chose one over another. And you might say it is unfair, but that is God, amen. That is God. He said, I've loved Jacob, but I've rejected Esau. That's one example of unconditional. There is nothing that Esau did to be rejected. There's nothing that Jacob did so much to be loved. Amen. It was just God's decision. And then in verse 15 of Romans chapter 9, God also said, he said, for God said to Moses, I will show mercy to anyone I choose, and I will show compassion to anyone I choose. May you be anyone God chooses. May you be that person that God chooses. Amen. He said, I will show mercy to anyone I choose. And then Bishop Crepe went into, um, this is the last part of this message. He went into talking about conditional favor. And beloved, I never gave this a lot of thoughts previously. You know, we are all, most of us know about the unconditional favor, but then when it comes to conditional favor, a lot of us haven't given it a lot of thoughts. This is the kind of favor that you activate in your life based on your choices or actions. You, there is a kind of favor that you can activate in your life based on your choices and your actions. So the question is, how can you enjoy this kind of favor? That one you can do something about. The first one you can do a lot about, but the second group you can do something about it. He gave some pointers. I'm going to give about five, I think five or six. The first thing he said you can do is live a righteous life. Live a righteous life. In Psalm 5, the book of Psalms, chapter 5, verse 12, in the New King James Version, the word of God says, For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor, you will surround him as with a shield. That's what God does. The psalmist is talking to God and said, as for you, God, I know that you bless the righteous. You favor those and you surround him, you favor him and you surround him with, um, as a shield. So God blesses the righteous. Question is, who is the righteous? Who is the righteous? Or how, how can you live a righteous life? Two things that I would say is, to be the righteous, you need to become the, a child of God. You need to become a child of God. You need to become born again. You need to live your past life and dedicate yourself, devote yourself to the Lord. That is the first step in becoming a righteous person. The second thing you want to do is that you want to live a life that pleases God. Hallelujah. Live a life 
that pleases the Lord. You know, you are not going to live a good life to buy salvation, but you will live a good life to enjoy God's favor. Hallelujah. Good, living good, a good life will not buy you salvation. You need to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and accept him into your life as your Lord and Savior to have salvation. But beyond that, you want to live a good and righteous life because God will not, you know, God will not bless dishonest living. God will not bless a filthy lifestyle. So if you are living in sin, you are preventing the blessings of the Lord in your, from coming into your life. So live a righteous life. The second thing, speak favor. Speak favor over your life. It sounds very, very simple, but it is so profound and powerful. In Job, the book of Job, chapter 22, verse 28, the book of Job, chapter 22, verse 28, the word of God says, you will also declare a thing and it to be established for you. So light will shine on your ways. Hallelujah. Somebody wake up in the morning, and call yourself, my name is favor. Amen. I like the way the Nigerians say it. My name is favor. Hallelujah. Call, call yourself favor. I have a favorable day today. The favor of God is going before me. And when you call out favor, speak favor over your children, speak favor over your job, speak favor over your life you will begin to enjoy conditional favor, which you have something to do about. The third thing, so the first one is live righteous. Second one is declare it, speak favor. Third thing is sow seeds of favor. There is something called the seeds of favor. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. If you are favorable to others, if you show others favor, if you cut a slack for people, you are, you are kind to people when you have no business being kind. Guess what? You turn around and God is going to show you favor. Hallelujah. When you show others favor, you are sowing the seeds of favor and you will reap favor in abundance. Amen. That's the third thing to do to activate conditional favor in your life. The next thing you can do to enjoy conditional favor, according to Bishop Crepe, is what? Promote the kingdom of God. Promote the kingdom. Be a kingdom promoter. Somebody who pushes the kingdom of God. You devote your life to seeing the kingdom of God expand. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says what? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So when you are a promoter, a financier of the kingdom, you devote your life to expanding the kingdom of God. Your, your daily life is your mind is preoccupied by how can I expand the kingdom? How can I promote the kingdom? What can I do to push the church? What can I do to push God's kingdom? What can I do to get people saved? How can I spread the word of God? If you are like that, you are a kingdom promoter and the favor of God is about to locate you. The favor of God is about to locate you. He said that anyone who makes he, who makes it his or her priority to promote or advance the kingdom of God will see God's favor in his or her life. Make it a priority and you'll see God's favor in your life. I like the last two and they are related. They are very related. So I'm going to put them together and get ready and let's pray and take the communion today. The last two. He said, if you want the conditional, you want to activate the conditional favor of God in your life, walk in the company of the favored. Walk 
in the company of the favored. Because you know that, right? Um, we've, we've always heard that um, you are the average of the five people that are closest to you. So if you are working with someone that is favored, guess what? Eventually, the favor will rub off on you. And you, you will also enjoy the favor of God. One person that enjoyed that kind of favor, I call it secondhand favor, was a uh, lot. So long as Lot was moving with Abram, Abram, the, he was prospering. Hallelujah. So long as he was moving with Abraham, he was prospering. It came to a time that he prospered so much, his, his uh, servants were fighting with the servants of Abraham. And then the, his, his life began to take a, um, a downturn when he decided to part company with Abraham. I've always said that if I were Lot, I would probably not leave. Just like Ruth decided not to leave Naomi, right? There are some people you don't leave. I don't know if I'm speaking to you. There are some people, even if they are asking you to leave, to go away, don't go away. Because there is a favor on their lives that you are going to need in your life. So he says that one way, I mean, Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17 says what? As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. The New Living Translation. So if you work with somebody who is favored, you are likely to be favored. And the last one, which I said is very closely related, um, very, very closely related to the one I just talked about is, if you want God's favor in your life, Bishop Crepe says, get married. Amen. <laughs> I see some single people smiling. If you want God's favor in your life, get married. Because Proverbs 18.22 says what? He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. It is the word of God. Amen. It is the word of God. If you want God's favor in your life, beloved, find a marriage partner and come and tell me. I'll bless you guys tomorrow. Amen. <laughs> All right. So this is the word of God to us today. I love this subject of favor. Amen. In, this, in these difficult times, I think this is what we need. In these hard times, in this challenging season, we need favor because we cannot complete the journey all by ourselves. You need some help. So right now, I want us to pray. We're going to go into the communion, uh, but I just want you to pray about the message. Say, God, favor, let favor fall upon my life. Let me enjoy some things that I don't qualify for. Help me. And actually, God is looking around for somebody to bless. Say, locate me, Lord. Locate me, Lord. Locate me, Lord. Locate me. Locate me. The eyes of the Lord are running to and fro the whole nation to show himself strong on the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. If your heart is not perfect towards the Lord, this is a good time to make it good. Make, make yourself right with God right now. Say, Lord, I want to make my heart right with you. I have a golden opportunity to start enjoying your favor. I want to make my life right, my heart right with you. Just go ahead, go ahead and make your life Make your heart right with God. Begin to pray. Just pray. Pray for a short time. After that, we'll go into the word. We'll go into um, the communion. We'll go into the communion. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Thank you for your word. Thank you for favor. Thank you, Lord, for unmerited grace, unmerited favor, oh God. Things that we don't merit. And thank you, Lord, also for the conditional favor that we will begin to activate in our lives. For anyone that dares to accept you, to, be, to live a righteous life, for anyone that dares to proclaim and, and, and to confess favor every day, to anyone that dares to walk with the favored, to anyone that dares to do according to your will, 
May your favor fall upon our lives, O God. May your favor fall upon our lives. To anyone that dares to sow a seed of favor, Lord, starting from today, O God, may your favor break loose upon our lives, O God. And beloved, as you are in the prayer mood, I want to pray for anybody that wants to accept Jesus into your, Lord, your life as your Lord and Savior. You want to start the favor walk. You want to start the favor walk by becoming the righteous, by becoming a child of God. I'll pray for you very, very briefly. And lift up your right hand wherever you are and say after me, Lord Jesus, I thank you for my life. I thank you for a day like this. I have a golden opportunity to start all over with you. I believe in you. I believe you are the son of God. I believe you came and died for my sins. I believe you will rise again. I believe that you come back again. I accept you into my life. Come into my life, Lord. Make me a brand new person. Make me a child of God. Be my Lord and my savior. Be my master, O oh God. I want to live the rest of my life for you. I want to spend eternity with you. Write my name in the book of life and give me the opportunity to enjoy your favor. Thank you, Lord, for answered praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. If you pray that prayer genuinely, please send us a comment, send us um, a message, and uh, we would like to support you in your new journey. But I am going to go into the, the Holy Communion right now, and uh, in First Corinthians chapter 11, please get your bread and your wine ready. First Corinthians 11, from verse 22 all the way to 30, 23 all the way to 32, the Apostle Paul talks about the, the Holy Communion. And he says that, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. When he took the bread in his hand and when he had given thanks for the bread, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper. And he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do, I mean, do this, partake of this, as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And he wants us to examine ourselves and partake of this. Because you might be opening the door for favor to come into your life. You might be opening the door for a new direction to come into your life today. You might be opening the door for life to become more manageable, more doable, easier for you going forward. So I want us to do this and do it properly. Just pray a short prayer right now and please reach out to your, pick up your bread and, and after your short prayer, I will lead us to partake of the bread and also of the wine. Pray a short prayer. Say, Lord, I want to do this right. I want to remember you. I want to remember what you did for me. I, I don't want to forget, oh God. And I want the whole, my whole life to reflect my gratitude for what you have done on the cross for my life. And right now, beloved, you want to um, pick up your bread or whatever you are using as the body of Christ. This is the body of Christ. Take, eat. May it build you up. May it strengthen you.
in Jesus' name. Let's go ahead and partake of the body of Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We exalt you. We celebrate you. We are built up by your body. Your body was broken so that ours will be built up, strengthened in the inner man. Also reach out for your wine, beloved, reach out for your wine. You want to lift it up to the Lord and declare upon your wine right now that this is the, the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on Calvary's cross for me. It redeems, it heals, and so I am redeemed, I am healed. The blood refines, so I am being refined today. The blood reaches up to the highest heights. It will plead my cause before my God. As you partake of the blood right now, may the blood go to plead your cause before God and release favor into your life. This is the blood of Jesus. Go ahead and let's drink the blood. Let's invite favor into our lives. Thank you, Jesus. My God, my God, my God. We give you praise. We give you praise. Somebody celebrate the Lord. We're going to ask Brother Jeremiah to come back, but before then, just be celebrate, celebrate, be in the mood of celebration right now. Because something significant has happened in your life. I believe there is so much power in the blood, so much power in the body, the broken body of Christ. Don't take it for granted. Something significant has taken place. And I want you to prepare. We are merging a lot of things together because of time. Prepare your offering. Prepare your first fruit right now. Solemnly prepare a Thanksgiving offering it is a fair Sunday in June. The year is almost halfway, and we are believing God that our better days are ahead for us. You want to prepare Thanksgiving offering to the Lord right now, and also prepare your first fruit, which is 10% of all of your income. And I'm going to be showing the screen on the board, on this, um, uh, some information how to give. Brother Jeremiah is going to minister, um, and as he's ministering, go ahead and give unto the Lord, and then we can crown it all with prayer and a benediction. So, Brother Jeremiah, um, you, uh, I just tried to unmute you. Go ahead and be a blessing unto us. And don't you be afraid. Joy comes in the morning. Troubles they don't last always. Oh, there's a friend named Jesus who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, Oh, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands.
your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, Lord, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand, no matter what may come my way. My life is in your hands. What Jesus, I can take it. With him, I know I can stand. No matter what may come my way. My life is in your hands. I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come up. My life is in your hands. But Jesus, I can take it. With him I know I can stand. No matter what may come from me. My life is in your hands. My life is in your hands. My life is in your hands. Thank you so much, Brother Jeremiah. God richly bless you. God bless you. Um, I know that you can make it. Amen. I know that you can make it. With Jesus in the boat, you can smile at the storm. Hallelujah. And so we are going to be praying over the offerings. We're going to be praying for the week. And we're going to be sharing our excellence declaration. And so uh, right now, you want to bow down your heads with me as we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the faithfulness of your people, O oh God, to come and be a blessing unto you, Lord, in offerings and first fruits, in obedience to your word. Father, we thank you for the gratitude in the hearts of your people. Lord, as we trust and obey according to your word, we invoke, O oh God, the blessings that are in your word for us. The blessings of giving, the benefits of giving. Lord, we multiplied. Lord, benefits of giving multiplied back unto us. The benefits of paying the tithe, benefits, O oh God, of coming to your house with first fruits, the first and the best, the cream of the crop. Lord, I pray. That as you look down, O oh God, may you look down favorably upon your people in the name of Jesus. Lord, may your goodness and your mercy locate us wherever we are. May your favor, unconditional favor and your conditional favor both locate us. May you change our stories, O oh God. May you give us a song of testimony, Lord, that we will run back into your house. We can't wait until we get the opportunity to tell about your goodness and your mercies. That is what this week is going to be for us. And we go out as gallant soldiers, as kingdom promoters, to conquer the ground, conquer the land for you. I pray for anyone that is going through any distress, anyone that is going to any distress because of the pandemic or because of social injustices in our society. I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit, you are the father to the fatherless, and you are the mother to the motherless. May you come through and cause somebody to be elevated beyond the storms that are confronting them. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray by faith, believing that it is done. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayers. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. 
So beloved, we're going to do our excellence declaration. And after that, the lines will be open. The lines will be open and um, we can interact among ourselves uh, before we leave. So don't be in a hurry to leave. Let's do our excellence declaration uh, today. Please say after me, out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. The Lord my God causes the righteous to shine forth as the sun. His awesome hand has formed me. His creative spirit inspires my mind. He skillfully guides my hands. Therefore, I boldly declare, I am set apart for excellence. The ruler of the universe has exalted my home among the nations. He sets my feet on high in his strength. I rise by faith. I press forward toward the price of my highest calling. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. He is the vine, I am the branch. In him I abide, in him I blossom. As it is written, God, who commanded light out of darkness, has shown his light in our hearts. We have his treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. In this year, I commit to excellence. I commit to exceptionalism. I commit to do the extraordinary. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. May it be unto you according to the word you have just professed. Amen. So um, we are going to say goodbye to our Facebook friends. And um, we're going to cut out.